I'm back on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and now I'm running the game under HDR. The monitor has VESA Display HDR 1400 certification, so that's the highest level for LCDs that VESA will certify for. Just a few things to be aware of. I'm using an RTX 3090 connected via DisplayPort, but I have tested via HDMI. I've tested an AMD RX 580 as well with HDMI and DisplayPort. And the HDR experience is largely consistent, regardless of the connection used and the GPU used. Only one slight thing I noticed is that with my AMD GPU, when I had it running at 165Hz, and I had VRR active, because you can use VRR at the same time as HDR on this monitor, and with local dimming and all of that enabled at the same time, but if I had VRR active 165Hz on my AMD GPU, HDR looked kind of a bit flooded, a bit washed out, not as saturated as it should. I don't know if that's an issue with this monitor and the AMD root specifically, because that is an old GPU. It's several generations old now, and the port is sort of not the newest. It is DisplayPort 1.4, but I don't know if it has full DSC capability or anything like that. But anyway, works just fine on my newer NVIDIA GPU, and the monitor does have 1,152 dimming zones, so that is a good number of dimming zones. It's not a huge number if you compare to the five or so million pixels of the monitor. So you get nowhere near the dimming precision you'd get on an OLED. So if I consider this particular scene here, there's actually a mixture of dark, somewhat darker, and lighter shades. With an OLED, it could give exceptional depth to the cracks and the rocks there. Medium shades would be very dark, the bright shades would be immediately brighter, that kind of thing. So you don't get that kind of precision, but the overall atmosphere for the darker shades here is good. There are some issues to be aware of, which I will cover when I get to them, when there are sort of darker and medium dark shades dominating without any brighter shades mixed in. There are some issues with visibility, and again, I will come on to those. And you do get some blooming and haloing, so you can see the, the bright crosshair there. There's a bit of haloing around it. You can see it perhaps more clearly around the HUD elements towards the bottom right. But I've got some better scenes for showing this, which I'll show you a little bit later. The bright shades there from the daylight, very bright indeed. Not super bright. The sun isn't streaming in here. It's sort of just passively illuminated, so it's not trying to go for the maximum brightness of the monitor here or anything, but it's still very bright there, and the depth there is very good, but there was some masking of detail there as well, and I'll come on to that a little bit later on. There are different modes, HDR modes, on this monitor, but the only one I'd really recommend using is the Display HDR 1400 mode or 1400 mode. HDR Photo and Personal appear very similar. I'm sorry that you can't really read this because it's super bright and it's massively overexposed. I'll see if I can fix that up so you can read it. There you go. At least you can see what it says now. So HDR Photo overall is very similar to Display HDR 1400, or it seems to be on my unit anyway. Personal is very similar as well, except it has this setting called Light Enhance. If you have that disabled, then it looks very similar to Display HDR 1400. But if you increase this, it brightens shades up a lot. It really sort of crushes things together. It brightens shades up too much. It gives an artificial and flooded look, which I don't really like. And it doesn't look as it should under HDR. But if you happen to like how this looks, then you can play around with that. HDR movie, that also looks flooded overly brightened, but if you like a lot of detail under HDR, so you don't want any masking of dark detail, then this could be something to try. An HDR game, which takes things to the extreme, it looks very flooded. The contrast is actually crushed completely. The contrast is nowhere near where it should be with this setting, and things just don't look HDR-like at all for that reason. With this all said, back to my preferred to play HDR 1400 setting. And let's put some numbers to things now and crack out the graphs. So there are three different local dimming settings. There's weak, medium, and strong. And a high level here will light bias more, and a lower level will dark bias more. So what that means is whether there are mixtures of darker and brighter shades, 
and you remember that there are a tiny number of dimming zones really compared to the number of pixels of the monitor. The monitor does have to compromise and it will have to decide does it want to show the dark shades well with good depth and will give potentially good atmosphere or does it want to brighten up so it shows those bright shades correctly for those dimming zones nice and bright. It'll have to make a compromise somewhere between the two. So with more dark biasing so the weak setting and to fair extent the medium setting, edge more towards the depth and atmosphere, whereas with the strong setting it will edge a bit more towards higher brightness. But either way, the monitor does have some degree of dark biasing sort of built into it anyway. But you can see some of the differences on the graph here if you look at the white patch size 1%. So for those that, who aren't familiar, white patch size, there's a block of white in the middle of the screen covering 1% of the pixels, 4%, 9%, 25%, 49%, or 100%, and the rest of the screen is black in this test. But at 4% patch size and above, so for the larger bright elements, it doesn't matter which local dimming setting you use, it behaves in much the same way. And also remember that 1% of pixels, still thousands of pixels, so you will have some smaller bright elements than 1%, and that can potentially show some clearer differences between these settings. But I prefer the medium setting. I sort of think that's the Goldilocks setting, really. That's my preference. That's the setting I settled on. But do feel free to test the others yourself and see which you prefer. Anyway, you know, not huge difference on this graph between the settings overall. But if you compare to the orange line, which shows the Dell Alienware AW3423DW, which is a QD OLED monitor, you'll see that the Philips is able to output greater brightness, particularly where brighter shades dominate. So it's sort of the inverse, in a way, of what the QD OLED shows. So the QD OLED, because it has per-pixel illumination, it doesn't need to dark bias. So it can show small bright elements with brilliant brightness and then immediately surrounding that it can just really shut off the pixels if it needs to. So it doesn't have a problem there. But there are some power limitations with OLED to be aware of where bright shades dominate and that's why it dims the automatic brightness limiter kicks in. Whereas with this Philips you don't have that kind of issue. It maintains strong brightness even with 100% of the screen showing white, which is really the extreme example, it will sustain a brightness of 1106 nits. So that really is impressive in that respect. I'm just loading up Battlefield 5 so I can show you a different scene which will have a lot of bright shades. And you'll see here white text and a white little loading cursor against a black background. You can see some haloing, some blooming because it doesn't have per pixel illumination. And I'll give you some more examples of this. But overall, I would say it's not bad on this monitor. The fact it's a VA panel and the fact it has a decent number of dimming zones does help. So it doesn't have an extreme amount of blooming or haloing. And I'll also mention at this point that the dimming zones are nice and reactive. So you don't get the kind of trailing of blooming or anything like that. There are definitely some responsiveness issues to be aware of, but they're not specific to the local dimming. They're actually broader on this monitor. And I'll come on to them in the responsiveness section. So this scene here on Battlefield 5, it really does look a lot better, a lot more as it should, than OLED monitors. So if you think about that ABL, automatic brightness limiter behavior I mentioned on OLEDs, it will dim a lot for scenes like this, or it will selectively dim depending on which part of the scene you're looking at. But here, on this monitor, you don't get that, and it can show really nice brightness for the sun there, the glints off the ice there as well, sort of the specular highlights if you like. And there's a nice natural glow around the clouds, nice silver lining there. And the sky in general just has a nice natural quality to it. It doesn't look flooded, but it does have this nice luminosity. I just love to use that word. Meanwhile, the darker elements such as the rocks here, the vegetation in the background there, the dimming zones can dim a lot there, keep them nice and dark. So I do feel that the HDR solution works really well for scenes like this. Back on good old Shadow of the Tomb Raider and I just have to jump into the water here because I always do that in my reviews so I have to show this scene, just feel completely obligated to do so. And this is a scene which for me it just it's a nice scene just for showing decent versus not so decent HDR performance and this is very much in the decent camp here really nice brightness. The glint of light on the water surface is very bright indeed. The glint on the waxy leaf there stands out nicely. 
this giant ball of light you can see there yes it doesn't look like that to the eye it's a bit more like that but you're not going to be able to see exactly what you'd see in person basically it's nice and bright definitely bright but there's also a nice quality to the mists there a smooth gradients and that's because under hdr the monitor is able to use 10-bit color processing rather than being stuck at 8-bit, which is really the maximum that's used for the vast majority of SDR content, certainly games. So this does give you nicer, gentler progressions of shades. It's also part of what can increase your distinction for darker shades, give you a nicer variety of closely matching dark shades. This isn't like the kind of uplift in detail you'd get with a gamma enhancement under SDR because it's achieved with a greater nuanced shade variety. It's a very different look, but I'm not going to sort of beat the drum about this too much because there are some issues to be aware of, which I'll come on to in another scene in terms of the visibility of darker shades. But overall, the representation of this scene is good. So you've got nice bright elements and good depth to the darker shades. Medium shades, they have extra depth as well. So overall, good representation here. I'm now back on that scene that I showed you under SDR when I was talking about contrast. And this is where some issues are apparent with the local dimming algorithm. So it seems to dark bias far too heavily where there are just mixtures of darker and sort of medium dark shades. So to the left of the screen there, it is really roughly how it appears on the video. There's just sort of a black mass. You really can't see the details. It's as if the dimming zones there are setting themselves to extremely low levels, which are very similar to if it was just displaying black or close to black, but it should actually be brightening up a little bit more than that. Or certainly some of the dimming zones, which are showing sort of medium dark shades, should be brightening up a bit more than they are. You do get that to an extreme degree here as well. There's supposed to be little skulls in the background. You can't see them here. Yes, it looks very deep, very atmospheric, and the monitor is able to respond to metadata, which is telling it that this scene is supposed to look atmospheric, but it's gone too far here. And even if I look at some of the areas centrally illuminated by the torch, such as the skulls there, just at the edge of the torch lit area, they're also too dim. So it really is just dark biasing far too heavily here. I wouldn't expect things to look perfect here, but I'm just going to show you something. If I turn on movie, you'll be able to see these bones I was talking about revealed, but unfortunately things look completely flooded as I mentioned before with this setting, so it isn't a good compromise. Really things should look somewhere between this and what I was showing you with the Display HDR 1400 setting. Again, I wouldn't expect perfection here because you don't get per pixel illumination. So OLEDs that I've seen, they handle this scene really well because there's actually an intricate mixture of dark and medium dark shades or somewhat brighter shades. And you really do need perpixel illumination to have exceptional depth to the darkest shades while still showing good detail levels at the same time. That isn't possible with mini LEDs, but again, it has gone too far with the algorithm. There should be a little bit of the detail conserved still. I've just adjusted the camera exposure so you can see the menu, local dimming setting. It doesn't matter what you set this to, even if you set it to strong, which is the highest. It's still dark biases very heavily here. And let's turn the solution off just so you can see how things look without it on. I'll correct the camera exposure so it was like I was showing you before. You can now see that the backlight is just setting itself as one single unit without any local dimming to a high level. Um, you can see more detail technically, although it looks completely flooded. You can still kind of see some of the skull detail or the bone detail through the ridiculous fog that you can see. But let's be honest, I don't think anyone is going to want to use HDR without local dimming on this monitor. It would be a huge waste. But I would like to see some tweaking to the algorithm if possible. This monitor does support upgradable firmware. I didn't notice this to the same extent on the ViewSonic XG341C2K, which is why I know it's not just a pure hardware limitation. Yes, there are some limitations with mini LEDs, as I mentioned. You don't get per-pixel illumination, so it's not going to be perfect but the ViewSonic shows that it can be tweaked and tuned better than it is here. And whilst I'm talking about the ViewSonic, it's worth mentioning that you could use local dimming under SDR on the ViewSonic, whereas that is not an option on this Philips monitor. I didn't love the local dimming under SDR on the ViewSonic because it had a very high locked brightness, which just doesn't work well for SDR. 
It really uplifted medium shades far too much and made some things look far too flooded, really not as they should look. You don't get the same kind of tone mapping precision as you do under HDR, so it didn't work very well at all. But it was at least an option. And I have mentioned this to Philips already, and they've said they are exploring it as a possibility for future firmware, but no promises that they'll add that. I did say I was going to mention a little bit more about Halos. Again, because it dark biases heavily overall, and it's a VA panel with natively strong contrast, I wouldn't say these are a widespread or obvious issue, but you do get them in places. So I can see them around the HUD elements towards the bottom right there. But they're not super obvious, and actually even here the monitor is dark biasing with my preferred medium setting. It is dark biasing a bit, so it's not super brightening up those dimming zones. Therefore there aren't extreme halos here. I can see it around the bow as well with the medium shade, so it doesn't have to be pure black or very dark shades in the background to see this haloing. I can see it around the bow there as well. You'll probably be able to see that in the video. A little bit too much of a glow, and that's partly because of the haloing. So I think really this scene is one that does highlight some of the relative advantages that OLED would have over a mini LED solution like this. But if you look at the extremes of bright shades, dark shades mixed together without focusing so much on the level of detail and that kind of thing, and occasional halos, it does do a good job at showing really nice deep atmospheric dark shades and good light bright shades at the same time. Another important aspect of HDR is colour reproduction. So unlike under SDR, where the developers had sRGB in mind, developers are able to target wider colour gamuts such as DCI-P3 and ultimately REC 2020. So this monitor does not offer full REC 2020 coverage. It doesn't offer full DCI-P3 coverage either, but it offers 95% DCI-P3 and some extension beyond that as well. So some encroachment into REC 2020. And this does allow a good level of vibrancy. And because these wider gamuts are actually being targeted here, it means that you don't get the kind of oversaturation that you see under SDR. So Lara's skin tone here looks nice and neutral. It doesn't look oversaturated. It doesn't look too tanned or too rich as it did under SDR, or it would have under SDR if I'd shown you this particular game or scene. But certainly I have observed this and it applies to other game titles as well. And yes, there are some losses of saturation. So the saturation is best centrally for the central bulk of the screen and a bit is lost particularly to the extreme side edges and bottom of the screen. But overall, a good level of vibrancy where the developers want it. So that includes these green shades here. There's nice depth to these. They don't look overdone like they did under SDR. Not as strong as I've seen in terms of vibrancy as on some models with greater Adobe RGB coverage and therefore greater Rec 2020 coverage in the green region of the gamut. But still good vibrancy. Laura's headpiece as well with the green feathers. That highlights some really nice vibrant shades as well. And this sky, good level of vibrancy there, but not overdone, not cartoonish. The reds here, again, toned down compared to under SDR, but still a good level of vibrancy. Nice look to the gold there. The fire, also toned down compared to SDR, but nice and vibrant. Some really nice strong oranges there, but not oranges that verge onto red like they did under SDR. I actually prefer the colour reproduction on this model to the ViewSonic slightly under HDR because I mentioned that there's some residual oversaturation with the ViewSonic because of how they'd mapped things. The Philips has really does a better job at showing the vibrant shades well but also showing the more muted shades appropriately muted. This looks more as I'd expect to see under HDR. So there's not really much more to say about this monitor under HDR. I think it does pretty well on the colour side, it does well on the contrast side, Yes, it's not as good as Perpix Illumination would give you on an OLED, and there are some issues in terms of the crushing of detail where darker and medium dark shades dominate. And of course, I have been considering HDR as a sort of a static thing in this section, like I usually do. You do have to consider that you're going to be observing motion a lot of the time, and there are some weaknesses in terms of pixel responsiveness, and that's something which you've explored in the responsiveness section or the responsiveness video. And just the final thing to mention, I also observed a lot of HDR movie content. And like games, some titles make better use of HDR10 than others, but I really made very similar observations in terms of what was impressive and what was less impressive there.